a zine festival, just zine specifically, back in 2016. Um, we had maybe like 20 people at little tables, like inside a coffee shop and outside. It was really low key, um, but it was really well received. And so we decided to do it another year. During that year, we tripled the amount of participation. Tripled. Um, I was not expecting that. It blew up. Um, I didn't know that many people were interested in beans. Um, so that was really exciting for me. Um, the only other person I had seen doing zine stuff locally was Bree Flannelly. Um, she did a thing in Fountain Square called Rad Girls Club for a little bit, and it was just um, women getting together and making zines. So um, I was happy that people cared enough to want to go to this festival. There are other festivals in Chicago, Wisconsin, New York. Um, I was kind of inspired by the Brooklyn Zine Festival and also a comic festival called Cake in Chicago. Um, Cake is really cool if you ever get a chance, lots of cool creators. Um, anyway, so we started as the festival. Um, kind of before the third year, we started getting asked to do zine making workshops all the time. Um, this ranged from like going to Girls Rock Indie, which is like a summer camp where girls learn to basically form a rock band. Um, we did a little bit with the Indianapolis Art Center. Um, we did a little bit at the library and it just kind of kept rolling. Um, the third Blue Stick Fest was really super successful. We did it at the Glick Center at like, what is that? 71st in Michigan. Um, I went across to that from the one. Dairy Queen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was fun, but like, there were so many people there, like the space that even a comic fit. We had like three tables <laughs> in the corner of the gymnasium um, and it just kept blowing up. And so at that point I was like, okay, I want glue stick to be a thing, but it's a lot right now. What do I do with this? Cause it's literally people showing up with like card tables and like the table that lives in their dining room. It wasn't, we're not an LLC. We're still not an LLC. We're not a nonprofit. We're just a name. Um, so maybe this year we'll figure out what we are. Um, I kind of decided after that festival that we could do a combination of a festival, but also teach more because people kept asking all the time, like, Hey, uh, you know, a lot of times with kids, I have this group of kids and I want to tell them what a zine is. Um, and so we ended up teaching at, let me see if I still have it. We taught it 18 different library branches. You can't really read this, but this was the little thing they held out. 18 branches, I think we only didn't go to two. Um, and it was kids, it was guardians, it was like anybody that wanted to show up and all we did was make a mini zine, um, which is what we're gonna do today. How many, are you guys familiar with zines? I know Maria is, I know Stephen is. Not really, no, okay. So, zines pretty much, it's a magazine, right? But it's an amateur magazine. Um, the one thing that drives me crazy about zine culture is when somebody puts an apostrophe before zines. This is not a downsized magazine. A zine is itself, don't put an apostrophe in front of that, two separate things. Um, <laughs> basically, so like when you think magazine, I'm gonna call Scott out here for a minute. This is a gorgeous magazine. So this is Indianapolis Coffee's Batch Magazine. Um, it's very slick, it's like perfect bound. I love this, this is so gorgeous. Um, yes. Right about there is my badge magazine sitting on top of that container. That's great. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Isn't it pretty though? It has like... It's, it's awesome, yeah. I'm going to Scott up because this is just so cool. There's all kinds of like really slick design, you know, um, really cool photos. It's gorgeous. It looks like a magazine you would go to the store and pick up, right? So a zine is like an accessible magazine. So you should be able to go to the library, use your home copy machine, use your school's copy machine to make a zine. Um, I do, let's see, I have so many zines on this table right now. <laughs> Here's one. So my friend John came by Comic Carnival. I work at a comic book store and he brought me his free zine. So when you flip through this, it's really nice, right? Like it looks like a booklet. Um, this is just like <laughs> nothing fancy but it's kind of abstract, right? There's not a lot of text. Are you guys familiar with art books? So an art book is kind of like a type of a zine. Um, this is like a zine art book and it's just weird. Like, hey Lee, um, 
weird like collages and digital art. Um, I don't know, but there's not a lot of text. It didn't look anything like that batch magazine, right? It's kind of, it's just like Xeroxed pictures. Zines can also be, let's see. Sometimes you get an in-between. So I'm sure you guys have heard of Musical Family Tree. They haven't done this for a couple years now, but they put out maybe, I think, what is this? Issue one. I feel like they did a couple more issues of this zine, but maybe not in the same size. But it looks like this, right? Like about the same size. This is on printer paper, though. And this is kind of a glossier paper. I think that even though it has that same kind of art vibe, like there's not a lot of text and stuff, um, maybe they did go through someone to print this which is fine. You can go through like a press or something to print zines too. Um, zines basically in general are just gonna be a magazine that you make primarily for passion rather than profit. It's totally fine to sell your zine for money, but there's gonna be so many people like John that are just gonna leave this free zine places. Um, people do like activism through zines a lot of times um, if you go to a protest people will be handing out zines or they want to you know express certain ways to protest they'll hand out zines historically zines have been kind of a mix of representing a fandom or a voice that hasn't been heard yet if that makes sense so like in the 60s a lot of people that were into star trek and science fiction they didn't really have like a Tumblr or the internet or an easy way to communicate with people. So they would make zines and hand out at conventions and trade them with each other to kind of let each other know that they existed. Um, with a magazine, it's kind of like a representation of something that's already going on. With a zine, it's kind of like, hey, we're here too. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me see here. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, we're pretty chill. Yeah. So um, I wanted to give a couple more examples of zines before we go into this. This is, uh, and I think pretty much everything I have here is local that I'm gonna show you today. This is my junior high zine. Um, I did this when I was 12 and 13 years old. And the reason why I always show this at workshops and things is because anybody can make a zine. Um, I did this with my best friend who lived in Anderson and literally we cut out and pasted a bunch of stuff to a piece of paper and we took it to a copy machine and we stapled it and we went to different concerts and handed it out. We handed it out uh, to like people at school and it became a thing. And we did eight issues of this thing and we were 12 and 13 years old. Um, and this continued until we were about 19. Um, before us in the eighties, another example of like, um, a zine to represent a certain subculture. Karma Records, we all know Karma Records, it's still around. They had a zine. Um, and this is just like, it's pretty cool. You can tell a lot of it was like typewritten uh, or on a typewriter, excuse me. I don't know how they printed it. I imagine that they did the same kind of like taping of things to a piece of paper and then Xeroxing it. Um, but they've been around for forever. Flash forward to now, um, Blue Stick prints several zines. Pretty much what we like to do, aside from hosting the festival and doing collaborative workshops, is doing what's called a zine jam. Um, because of COVID, we haven't been able to get together and really do it, but it's basically just a bunch of people in a room working on a zine together. Um, you're always welcome to send us an email submission as well. But um, this was like our first... Comet Carnival zine. So at Comet Carnival, we basically invited people to come hang out and we picked a theme. This one was, I think, just monsters. Um, so we had, let's see. So there's a little bit of article type of stuff in there, like a traditional magazine, but there's also just people's art. Um, and again, I just took these to a copy machine. Um, yeah, some more of people's art. 
The thing to remember about zines is there's just no rules. Like when you think magazine, you think contents page, ads page, you know, this feature article. A zine can be like literally anything. Um, people did comics. And independent comics is really similar to zines too. Um, they kind of coexist together. What we're gonna do now, unless anybody has any questions again, good? All right, cool. What kind of paper do you guys have? I don't know, I feel like this is some fancy stuff. I got an RV paper back when I graduated, so. 2008, I don't know. Okay. It's, it's got some watermarking, watermarks cool. in it. Cool. Eight, eight and a half by 11? Cool. Eight and a half by 11. Okay, yeah, if you have eight and a half by 11, that's perfect for this. If you don't, you can still kind of follow along, um, but this is pretty much the standard of what we're going to use. So, is everybody familiar with using a copy machine, first off? Because often when I teach this workshop, like sometimes kids have never used a copy machine. Sometimes adults have never used a copy machine. Oh yeah, I have. We're all good here. I, I figured as much. <laughs> um, that really surprised me when I found that out. I was like, like never, you don't have a printer at home? Um, anyway, okay. So when we're thinking about zines, I want you to think about one thing that you want to express right now. It could be, I want to show people my doodles. I want to show people my words. I want to just write about what I've been up to. Maybe you don't want to use words at all. Maybe you just want to do a collage, um, put stickers on something. I'm going to kind of give you an example of some mini zines. Um, I like to keep the ones that kids make at library because they're super funny. Um, and I have some good ones from my friends too. So when we're talking mini zine, it's this size, right? So I made this out of one eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, and you can too. Um, <laughs> that one is poetry. I really wish I had this one mini zine. There was a kid that just wanted to write about the song Summer of 69, and he was like 10. <laughs> and he was like, I just really love this song, man. And that's what his whole zine is about. Um, <laughs> it was super weird. So here's an example. Um, that somebody did, and I'll show you kind of how it's folded in a minute, but just to give you an idea of what should my zine be about. If you can see, somebody just drew like kind of a beach, kind of a scene. These are stickers right here. This hasn't made it to the copy machine yet. This is just kind of like the raw copy that you guys are gonna be doing today. Um, and I haven't done anything on the inside yet, so they just did a cover. That happens oftentimes too, where somebody gets stuck on a cover. Um, an example, of what to put on pages or how to. This is all stuff that got taped in here on these pages. And this is actually a version of that first zine I showed you, but I cut out all of this text and I printed it inside of here, kind of how you saw it was printed before. Let's make the bones for this. You guys want to grab a piece of paper? And give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Thumbs up, cool. All right, um, I'm gonna go over this in my own words and then I'm going to recite a mini zine that my friend Thistle made that was just me explaining to them how to make a mini zine because it's hilarious. <laughs> okay, are you guys familiar or do you remember hot dog fold and hamburger fold like from school? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So let's do a hamburger fold. Kind of like that. Perfect. And leave it kind of closed, buns closed on the hamburger. <laughs> and hold it up when you're ready. All right. Let's see, I think. Video issue, make sure you're good. Okay, that looks good. So, hold it one more time. Kind of like a mini hamburger. So it's even smaller. And right after that, you're going to fold it one more time. So 
So it looks like a mini zine, but there really aren't any pages yet. Does that make sense to everybody? Let's see. Make sure I can see everyone. How many things did we fold so far? So, um, basically we did the one hamburger fold, mm -hmm. tiny hamburger, like slider size, and then like extra tiny. Okay. Yep. Bailey, is this making sense to you? I couldn't see your video because it kept going in and out. I'm following along, okay. no problem. Sorry about that. No, you're the cool. I'm just issues. making sure I'm doing my thing and that you're on board. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got it to the tiny spot. All right. So what I want you to do is open it back up to that first hamburger fold, right? So you've got like four quadrants here. And I'll wait till everybody's got that, got that. All right. So awesome. This is the fun part that I love doing at the library. Um, we're going to make SpongeBob pants. I don't know what else to call this. It's what they look like. Um, do you guys have scissors? Awesome. And we could go real DIY and tear it if you don't have scissors, <laughs> but it'll be easier if you have scissors. All right. So the thing to remember with SpongeBob pants, the part that's folded is always going to be at the top right there. Okay. Let's ignore the part that's open down here. It's done. We're not going to mess with it. So on this folded part, you're going to want to cut just down to the middle here. So like right smack dab in the middle of all those squares until you have what I call SpongeBob pants. So I stopped in the middle and these kind of look like shorts, right? Um, so remember one side is just the part that's not folded. That's open. This is that folded side, but I cut right down the middle, but I stopped. See you there, Steven. I know Lee's done this a bunch too. Awesome. That looks perfect, Destiny. Yes, Lee. You are uh, on mute. <laughs> uh, come on. Okay. There we go. It can hear me now. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. So my question was, I have this is unfolded. When you said to that first hamburger fold, you mean here? Yep. So here. Okay. Then you. One more. Okay, then one more. Yep, and then even one more to have like the tiny little folds that you have. Yeah, for I even went one more extra for extra tiny. But and hey, that's fine. That's you can totally make but... it as tiny as you want. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so to here and then. Yep. To so there, and then you open it back up to that first hamburger fold, and um, open it one more time. Perfect. So okay. you see where it's folded on one side. Mm -hmm cut from the fold just right down to the middle of the paper. So I'm cutting up here? Yeah, you're cutting that way, but don't cut on the only, open part. Only through one side or on, on yeah, one side. Yeah, so I'm, ignore these, this part. Do it on the part that's folded. Okay. Yep, Sorry. So where you're I'm, holding it on top? Oh, so I'm cutting the fold up. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, just don't go all the way. <laughs> just stop in the middle. Like like halfway up, maybe? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So do you see, like, pretend that I didn't cut this yet. See how far it goes okay. down, but it stops in the middle. So it's basically like when you yeah. open it back up, you've got yep. this. Yeah, so you're perfectly on the right spot. Okay. Cool. So when you cut this, open it back up. And like Lee was just showing, you kind of have, like, a slit or a diamond in the middle. Or it looks like a... Looks like a mouth. Mama. Yeah, mom, mom, mom. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say it's like a Pac-Man mouth. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, this is the weird part, and it seems a lot harder than it is. It's just simple origami. So I want you to hot dog fold this down so that it shows. Oops. Make sure your corners are straight, unlike me. <laughs> There we go. So it's just like that accordion of stuff, right? And on top, you can kind of see that opening in the middle that we made. Yeah, that looks good. Does that make sense, Lee? I think so. I was just trying to uh, 
make sure that I was understanding what you meant. So yep. like this and then the fold, the cut is on the top or on the outside? Yeah, so you should be able to hold it like on either side and kind of whop, whop, whop. Yeah. Okay. That looks right to me. I think that's right. Oh, I think I see what you mean with this. Where is your cut on that? Uh, this is my cut right here. Okay. If you can, I might have folded it back wrong. I, that's where I was getting confused. With, so you said a hot dog fold. So yeah, so take um, that, hold it just like that. This mm -hmm. is so funny to do on a video. Okay. Yeah. So, like, hold it all the way open and just fold one side down. Like that. Oh, right. Perfect. Sorry, I was like doing the hot dog style thing wrong. <laughs> No, you're all good. Um, every time I say that, it makes me hungry, too. I'm like, I want lunch. <laughs> yeah, hot dog and hamburger. So this is the weird part, um, and I never really know how to tell people how to do it, so bear with me. We're basically just going to fold it like this way. So you close the diamond, and it makes kind of a book. Perfect. Yep, Destiny's doing it right. Awesome. So, like, doing this, and then... Just kind of folding it into pieces. Where they meet. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep. And then the, gotcha. And so, once you do that, you can kind of make sure it's folded together. And you see that it has pages, right? And you made pages mm -hmm. without stapling. So just by folding it like that, you should have individual pages. Is that making sense to everybody? Mm-hmm. Okay. So like you got your fourth little... Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Cool. See? Cool. Bailey, what kind of paper are you using? It looks cool. It's the page of a magazine? That's awesome. That's great. Yeah. So this is an ad from Architectural Digest. <laughs> I love that. That I ripped out and then just used because it's it's eight and a half by 11, like it's standard issue right. printer paper. Um, but it just makes the base colorful and then everything else that you do, like it always looks like a exactly. completed scene awesome. because there's color I on every page. That. That's true. Um, you could really do this with anything. As long as you know how to make these like pre-folded pages, you could really use whatever. Um, a lot of people are like, does construction paper work? And I'm like, if you can fold it, you can do it. Um, awesome. So um, to recap, I'm going to read you the mini zine. My friend Thistle made after I showed them how to make a zine. <laughs> and I'll show you how to set up pages. So, how to make a zine according to Kelsey. Okay. Let's see if I can get this right. Like a hamburger. All right. Hamburger fold. Like another hamburger. <laughs> I love this. So it really just like illustrated how to make a mini zine and then like <laughs> so drew silly. pictures of like hamburgers and <laughs> hot dogs. Like a, like a really tiny hamburger, like a slider. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, now unfold until there's four squares. You could say this is a meta zine, right? This is so meta. This is the most meta, right? Um, a zine about making zines. What does this say? <laughs> Cut close to the center so it looks like SpongeBob pants. <laughs> Fold the book the way it doesn't want to go. And so usually, uh, and boom, zine is the last page. Usually when I'm trying to show people that last part, it's just, it's a weird thing because really all it is is folding it over. But the way that you fold it the entire time makes you want to push the paper the other way. Um, so that can be confusing for some people. But anyway, recap. Um, had to share that because I found it. I was just like, that's so funny. So, um, how to make a mini zine. Uh, you guys have been maybe thinking about content a little bit. Um, you also don't really need to know what content you want to put in there. You can just kind of do a stream of, stream of consciousness zine. It's whatever you want to make it. Um, some of the stuff that I brought today, I love crayons. Um, I love to do collage so I did some scotch tape I don't have any glue sticks which is really pathetic and I feel um like I'm failing in some way but I usually have glue sticks um like the like the 
But isn't it called glue stick? How can you be glue stick if you don't have an actual glue stick? I know, they're like, what is fraud? Just kidding. What is fraud? Just kidding. You're fine. I have all these, like, cute Halloween stickers. So glue stick does a Halloween zine every year, which last year we didn't. It was really sad. But all the years before that, while we were a thing, we did a Halloween zine. Um, and we always bring, like, stickers for people that are like, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to stick this here, and then I want to copy it. Um, so whatever you want. Let's see. Colored pencils are good. You can use these fancy Pentel brush pens. Um, and for, like, a lot of digital folks, they're always like, well, can I do this digitally? You can. I mean, you can set up the grid that we're going to be working with in Photoshop, Illustrator, Procreate, whatever. Um, but for glue sticks purposes, we just like to do paper because it's super accessible. You could, like, show up to the park and be like, let's have a zine throwdown and start folding it, you know. Um, I love that, like, physical aspect of it. So um, we have these zines that we made, right? A super easy way to map out your pages is just to number them. Because by the time we unfold this and we're going to Xerox it or take it to a copy machine, you're not going to know what's going on. They're not going to be in order. So what I would like you to do is maybe take a pencil in case you're going to do something over this. If you do a pen, maybe you can write over it. I'm going to do a pen for now because for some reason I don't have a pencil. And just go through every one of your pages and number them. So like on the front cover, do like one, two, et cetera, um, just so you know where you're designing. And you should have written on eight pages, including like the front and back. Um, if you want to look up, I'll go through it too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the back side is eight. Okay. Um, I love to design zines while they look like this. The only problem with that is that if you plan to make copies of this zine, margins are going to be your enemy. And I freaking hate margins. They ruin every zine I try to make <laughs> because I just want to fill all the pages and do whatever I want, right? Um, so if you feel like you're going to want to take up this whole space, what I want you to do is unfold your zine. And take like a ruler or just a straight edge of some kind and another piece of paper and just kind of do a square inside the square so you have a little bit of room on the edges. So when you go to make a copy, the copy machine doesn't like cut anything off. Um, I always will write the title at the very bottom of my poetry mini zines and it's always cut off and I have to take a pen and like, finish writing the title. You don't want that. It's stupid and tedious and preventable. Um, so you can refold your zine back to how it was if you want to design it or you can just design it like this if your brain works that way like i said um i like it looking like this and hopefully depending on how you folded it it should kind of naturally go back into this shape is anybody having any trouble with that it seems like everybody's pretty cool with it cool um so one thing Oh, I should mention, because yeah. I mean, I, I graphic design for a living, so I'm always aware of margins. Um, you probably awesome. want to do about a quarter inch is probably a quarter the, inch. Perfect. Is, yeah. is the right amount. Yeah. Yeah. It's the worst, right? I've done so many good things and I've been like, oh, not going to print. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's no fun. It really isn't. Um, so what I want you guys to do right now is kind of think about what you're going to do with your zine, if you're drawing, if you're writing, if you're using stickers, if you're doing a collage, um, you can ask me questions. I'm just going to kind of start making a zine and talk to you while, while, blah, words, while I do it um, and say why I'm doing it, what kind of components I'm using, and that sort of thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. All right. Um, do you mind if I put you, well, I think you're on spotlight right now, just so that people can see you better. Yeah. 
I apologize right, so, for the lighting. You're fine. Um, All right. I was going to, I unfolded it so that I could turn it the other side out because uh -huh. I have old text on this sheet and I wanted to invert it. So, and now I forget how to actually, once I've got the hot dog fold. No, you're cool. So, uh, let's see. Let me get mine back to hot dog state. <laughs> All right. So, you've got it like this. Um, make that diamond shape. Oh, right. Yeah, so that's just the part I was missing. Yeah, just hold like either side, and then when you make that shape, it should kind of naturally go to one side and make a bit. Yep, yeah. perfect. Cool, thank you. Awesome, you're welcome. All right, I don't know if I've used this yet. What is this? These are fun. This is like a twistable crayon. Um, before COVID, we used to bring a suitcase of art supplies to every single workshop or event and just say, take whatever or use whatever. Um, so that's also why I don't have a lot of things, but somehow I obtained these cool things. And I'm going to color cover purple. All Have you guys been doing a lot of reading during this time or have you pretty much just been binge watching TV? Or a mix of both? Gaming, TV. Gaming, yeah. Yeah, games, TV, some books. Yeah. A little bit of all that. Yeah. So yeah. I graduated college. Go ahead. Oh. And um, when you graduate into a pandemic, it's hard to find a job. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you knew this. Uh, it seems almost obvious in retrospect, um, but basically, because I was job searching for so long, a lot of my pandemic spent being like, I'm not good enough at things. I need to get better. Right, right. So I've been starting like a design library and like collecting a lot of resources. That's awesome. Um, which has just been very hard on my little brain, but right. That, that's, that's really hard. Really yeah. I mean, and it feels anticlimactic, right? Like you graduated, but like, was there much fanfare? Does it feel complete? <laughs> you know, it, it's one of those things where like my parents are like super proud, and I keep being like, uh huh, right, sure, <laughs> nice. I guess yeah. I did that. Yeah. Well, and then like it, I thought I was going to be freelancing, and I just kind of confirmed like, hello, you will be freelancing. <laughs> right. Enjoy that. <laughs> Here it um, is. But what's kind of interesting about that is then you gain all of these resources and you learn about all these um, designers who are far more talented than you are. Right. And then you get a freelance <laughs> client who just has no idea of any of that. And they think everything you do is awesome. And you're like, no, it sucks. I promise. Like, <laughs> like don't you, you could know have found someone this? better. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It's so hard to like be confident, like full disclosure. I, you know, I've really struggled with like glue stick because it's such an in-person thing and it really thrives off the people that are involved with it. And when you can't be around people, like it's definitely difficult. And I like Zoom has been fun. I love doing virtual things, but it's just, I don't know, something is missing. And like there are days where I'm like, oh, is this going to happen next year? You know, which it is. It's, it's going to be a thing for a while, but um, I'm definitely um. getting down on myself too. I understand those uh, struggles because uh, I graduated in 2009. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what a year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that yeah. took about two years for me to find full-time work. So, uh, yeah. And I had like three internships and yeah. none of those went anywhere. And yeah, it was, it was great. So. That's tough. I get it. Yeah. It's a... Uh... I mean, what can you do except keep going, you know? Um, I well, love and it makes you grow in a lot more, like, fight or flight kind of way. Like, I right. feel like I'm a better designer now a year later. Right. Exactly. through that. that um, was and like... I also have a lot more magazine subscriptions. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I guess that's cool, too. It's sort of been a, a blessing for, like, paper and things that everybody was like, these are going to disappear. Like, this is no longer a part of modern society. All of that stuff suddenly became very important when no one could go anywhere <laughs> and when they needed an outlet, you know? 
Um, I just, I know I keep going on about Batch Magazine, but I was just like, that came out at the perfect time because everybody's sitting at home drinking coffee. Everybody's missing that coffee shop experience, you know? Um, yeah, actually, I work at Monon and we have copies for sale in our shop. And so, you work at Monon? I used to work at Monon. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's great. Were I you, loved Monon. Were you there after um, or before Leslie bought the place? So I was there before Leslie bought it, but I worked with Leslie all the time. I love her. Oh, that's awesome. She's yeah, she's awesome. Um, she has been kind of stressed lately because we're trying to find someone new to add to staff. But yeah, um, yeah, we got Batch in the other day and and it's been kind of funny because it's like someone else's magazine and I, I am a designer. Right. Um, but they'll be like, Oh, well, what's this? And I'll be like, it's a really awesome magazine. Um, right. and I'm like explaining what the content is and stuff. And it's just a very thorough explanation for a barista to be handing someone. But it's they like, always kind of look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, it gets you excited though. Right. Like I, so I was a barista for six years and I also roasted coffee and I ended up being a master barista. Uh, Ooh, okay. Crazy. Yeah. So I don't, it's been a little bit since I've done it, but, um, I still love coffee and so batch was like ah remember like the good parts of coffee <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like explaining it to people too um it's yeah nice. i would love honestly uh i i don't really know the guy who does it i've seen i've met him like once in person yeah but i would love to do content with him to do, like just to do like a spread of like this is the best like baked good and coffee pairing at every coffee shop in the city or that something would be wonderful so he's super nice um hilariously i met him like i guess six years ago i did what's called a cupping like when you cup coffee to taste flavor profiles and that stuff um at my old job and that's when he first started like getting interested in indianapolis coffee um i hadn't thought about him for a while and he's doing indie design week and he slid into glue sticks dms and was like oh i didn't know you guys existed like i have this magazine about coffee and this and that and uh after talking for a little bit, I was like, he was that guy. And he was like, wait, did I attend your cupping six years ago? And he had a picture of like a bag of beans I roasted. And it turns out we've known each other for like six years. Um, so thanks Indie Design Week for connecting us again. That was really fun. Um, he's super nice. He's doing a thing for Indie Design Week. I bet if you were just to reach out to him, like especially as a barista, he would be super kind and want to talk to you. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll reach out to him because um, we were just talking about his work the other day. That's like awesome. while I was on shift, so nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think and he's also on. A small world with it's Mona. such a it's a small city, right? We're only like the 14th largest city or something like that. Yeah, world's biggest small town. Really? Yeah. What were you saying, Stephen? Oh, um, well, actually, a couple things. So yeah, yeah it's funny that we're 14th now because back when I graduated, we were like 11th or 12th. So I guess we wow. shrunk a little. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then I was going to mention that Scott is having his presentation on Friday at like 3.30, I think. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so, attend that if you can, you guys. Um, I want to support him as much as possible. And I think Poppy does the Indie Coffee Box, right? Which I'm unfamiliar with that. It seems like a loop cake for coffee, which I'm very on board with. <laughs> yeah, it's a subscription model. Yeah, That's it's cool. uh, it's kind of like if you've heard of Trade, which is also another box coffee subscription thing. Yeah, that's it's kind of awesome. like that, just for indie roasters. Yeah. That's so wonderful. I miss roasting coffee. It was definitely one of my favorite jobs. Um, my favorite roaster right now is uh, Circadian Coffee. I don't know if you guys have had Circadian, but they're so so good. If you yeah, look in the chat, there's a link about the uh, coffee box as well. Yeah, Circadian's pretty awesome. Um, I miss being able to go in there and just grab like a cup of coffee when I buy beans. Right. So I miss sitting in a coffee shop. Like I, one of the last things I think Mario still is that uh, Mario and I went to Rabble before it had new owners. Um, and like directly after that, every single thing shut down. So I have this really sad memory of like sipping on a mocha, like, well, here's our glue stick plans. And then a year goes by and <laughs> nothing happens. Oh no. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Is everybody doing okay content wise? Does anybody feel lost? Good? I'm just doing whatever. Cool to hate. And that's <laughs> what all about. 
I mean, I'm just, well, remember how you said getting stuck on the cover? I mean, yeah, I'm still I on the cover. Yeah, I would stuck on the cover. I think that if I were ever to work, like, professionally in comics, I would just have to be a cover artist or even a professional magazine. Because I'm always stuck here doing whatever. I love to create, like, uh, logos. And, and that's what design's all about, though, right? And this is a fun way to kind of play with ideas, too. Yeah, my day job, because, you know, we're always like, un, you know, we're always in, cr in crunch mode, you know, getting stuff done. I'm always trying to optimize my time. So right. I would be well beyond the cover if this was like a real client, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So a good way to break out of that, if you feel like, wow, all of my zines are just covers, is to start with a spread. Like, just go into the middle and it's like, okay, I'm doing the centerfold first. Yeah, no, that's a perfect point um and i've done that before especially if it's an informational zine because i'm like i need to get the important things in and then doodle <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like um it's like an add workaround where it's like okay well i just want to do the fun stuff so exactly. let me do the content first exactly i always have these like flashbacks to junior high like doing some kind of project and like wanting to make it pretty but not really getting the point of the project <laughs> about to migrate away from the cover as much as I don't want to. Yeah, somewhere back over here. Well, okay, first off, somewhere back over here, I have a zine I made. Uh, was, where was it? It was at uh, one of the one of the buildings on 10th Street. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was, it was just some random thing. And it was like me, a friend, and three other people were all just kind of making a zine. And I made some really elaborate thing with things that fold out, almost like a pop-up. I book. love that. Oh, man. Yeah, I need yeah. to go find it. I was going to say, if you find it, show it to us um, or post it later, because that would be awesome. Yeah, and uh, of course, I still have the, the, the glue stick mail-in thing where I sent five bucks. That was so bucks. fun to put together. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. I love sending that. Yeah. Um, we're probably going to start doing that again here soon. I donated a bunch of my zines to a local gallery, so I'm kind of in the process of like getting more before I go too crazy. Nice. Yeah. Um, Look at these Star Wars stickers. I'm about to bust these out. Oh, nice. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I'm buying goofy stickers because I just love them. So I imagine you visit Dollar General a bunch because they yep. just have that huge, like, yep. wing great. panel. Yeah. I feel like like the apocalypse is going to happen, and I'm going to be that last person standing in, like, the supply aisle and also the magazine <laughs> rack that is just, like, <laughs> Archie Digests and, like, Women's World or something. <laughs> well, something kind of funny about uh, the magazine aisle at Dollar Gen, I actually did the, we, we actually had a project where we did the little stickers that go on the magazine rack for Women's World and Archie Digest and all that. Awesome. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, it was this one-off project last year, probably because, well, money was tight, so we were trying to right. get anything we could get, and it was That's so awesome. weird. Yeah. I like that though. It's a thing, right? That's somebody's job to create that sticker. Yeah. So they, whoever, I don't know, there's, there was a lot of middlemen in this thing, but they, they sent over all the logos and I had to place them all on a black background and make sure they were all centered. And there was like actual revisions back and forth. It was crazy. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Actually, let me go, I'm gonna go find so, those stickers. Yeah, go ahead. do it. Do it. Um, so right. Kelsey, what's your like plan for the next year with Blue Stick? Like as things kind of open back up, that's a great looking question. for volunteers to help like assemble boxes or well, or anything like that. Um, so it's difficult to say because in a perfect world we want to have three whole punch this year in person. Um, we did it virtually last year and that was fine, but I just I really miss being in person. But I don't know with COVID how that's going to work. Um, what we are doing is we're in a collaboration with Cathead Press right now, we're doing a zine called Anaphora. Um, Anaphora is basically just a poetry zine, um, but they're going to print it on their risograph printer. They got a grant to get that printer, and they're just going to kind of, you know, they want to promote people using it, and they ask Blue to collaborate. So every third Friday, we've had somebody do like a poetry live stream or a pre recorded poetry reading, and we posted it from Blue Stick social media. Um, all of that, I think the deadline for Anaphora is the 27th of this month, and there's like three slots left. So if you want to get in on that, um, it's a paid opportunity, send us your poems. 
we have links in Instagram's bio. We have a link in the Facebook bio um, to Google Form. So we're going to print Anaphora. I think Kat had said that'll hopefully be done by like early summer-ish. Um, after that, we're going to try to print a magazine again, which is funny that I'm talking about zines and explaining the difference because we actually still do a magazine too. Um, last year we put it on issue.com, like I S S U U.com, which is a cool thing. They basically like digitize the PDF and on a tablet you can use your finger to flip through pages and insert hot links and that kind of thing. Um, but we want to print print it. And I had asked Scott at Indie Copy um, where he printed that. So I was like, that looks really good. So um, if you want to get involved <clears throat> with either the magazine, collaborative uh, zines that we're doing, and hopefully Free Hole Punch, just shoot us an email. Um, our email is bluestickindie at gmail.com. You can send us a direct message on Instagram or Facebook, um, whatever's cool. We usually have a website, but it's down right now because I tried to edit a bunch of content really quickly, and then it became a mess, and now I'm just having it down until it's fixed <laughs> because it's way better if I just fix it and it's down and it stays up there. So, um, but anybody can do it. It's an all ages thing. Um, we definitely have more adult oriented projects. Um, not like adult, but you know, drink and draws and that kind of thing that we want to do um, that aren't exactly all ages. So um, get involved and you can always come by Comic Carnival. I'm at Comic Carnival every day except Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you can come pick my brain and We'll talk. It's good. Nice. Um, this is my cover I need to move on from. It is an ice cream cone sticker and Chewbacca and Poe Dameron um, and Crayon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All the food groups. So I put your email in chat and then I believe I'm making double shirt. Okay. And then I also put Anaphora's poetry zine submission form in there as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's yeah, no awesome. Problem. So I guess now I have some show and tell because I went and visited my bookshelf back there. Do it, yeah. So first off, Hot Wheels stickers. Awesome. So I, I too have stickers. That's great. This is important because I'm kind of a part-time collector of die cast. Ah, cool. That's great. So, I mean, this is one, this is like a 2010 model, but back here I got a bunch of stuff. And then over on my TV, I got a bunch of stuff. And bedroom, I have two storage lockers full of stuff anyways. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of been my hobby to get out of the apartment. Nice. I um, feel like everybody's been trying to find something to get them out too. So that's a good one. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, here's your mystery pack. Awesome. I love <laughs> the pineapple bag, man. We sent out all of those and I love them so much and now I can't find them anymore. So I need to find uh, another thing. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, there's stuff, there's goodies in there, but I found my I found my zine that I made. Awesome. It's also a mini zine, actually. Nice. And yeah, like I said, there's a lot of moving pieces. So let me try to unpack this thing. Yeah, for sure. OK, so. This is the actual cover once you unpack all the folds. I love that. That's so cool because you just like, yeah, you cut out the picture. Look at that. So did you cut that out of a comic? That looks like comic paper. I think, yeah, that's pr probably was a comic. Yeah, it would have had to be. That's awesome. Yeah, because I think one of my friends brought comic books with him that he didn't want to keep, I guess. And so that's really cool. There was that. Um, let me see. I remember there was a trick with this one. Oh, yes. Okay. So you got a baby face <laughs> and then you push the, you push the butterfly out. Oh my God. And, and it's a bow. Look at that. Yeah. That's cute. And, and then it's like, oh, what a nice baby, but he's hiding kind of a bad secret behind him. <laughs> behind him. He's got an American spirit <laughs> cigarette box. You gotta be careful with those smoking babies. Right. They're out there. <laughs> I love this. So like, uh, just to pause for a second, this is such a perfect example of what a zine is. It can be this, like just babies hiding cigarettes, and <laughs> you can fold it however you want. I love that. That's awesome. Totally, totally. This <laughs> one's this one's pretty crazy. So it kind of looks like nothing, right? right? Just kind of stuff, but 
you unpack it. Oh, it, I love a, that. Get That's a full, so cool. Yeah, you get a full image, and then you can even flip it around. And then I did a sketch of, I don't know if it's supposed to be of this guy. I don't think it's supposed to be of this guy. Right. Like this is something different. This guy, yeah. And then the, the partial article about, who's that, who's that supposed to be? Some gentleman. Oh, it's, or is it Shaq? Is it Shaq? It might be Shaq. It kind of looked like Shaq, but I couldn't tell. Yeah, 1989. This is in college. So yeah. Okay, baby Long Shaq. time ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Is so cool yeah and this is a full eight pager so i mean <laughs> there's uh there's yet more to be revealed here okay so we got this one you can fold it up it's just kind of a figure and then you I fold that. fold it down ah! and if you're army man this is the best <laughs> oh man That's um, so cool. Okay, yeah, and this just looks like a just bunch of junk, but let me unpack it. Okay. All right, let's see. I love that. Yeah, pull it way That's back. So fun. Yeah. That's great. And it's nice, right? Because like you don't have to make a copy of your zine for it to be a zine. Like a lot of people do cool one-off things like this. Yeah, that was what was funny about the uh, the lady running the event. She was like, um, "I'm not gonna be able to copy that." And it's like, right? That's fine. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So like, I got all these copies of stuff other people did, you know. But, right. That's but yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh yeah, you're welcome. Let's see. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep showing. Yeah, please do. So I drew something on that on that spread on top of this magazine cover. Look at how extensive that is. That's so cool. <laughs> he drew ravioli jabroni. <laughs> Look at this work of art. Yeah, that's a, crazy, Eat right? Ravioli. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the rock holding ravioli. That is the happiest thing I've seen all year. I'm just going to say it. Like, look at him. Take that, young rock. Eat your ravioli. <laughs> Was that a WWE spread beside it? Like, on the other page? Oh, behind it? Yeah, it was WWF, of course. That's so funny. <laughs> Man, I love that. And I love, like, when you turn it around, you can see all the other pages just, like, hanging out. It's still a booklet. Like, it's just, man, oh, it's yeah. so epic. That's great. So, as you imagine, with something like this, you have to remember how you fold everything back. Cause... Right. Yeah, that's the <laughs> thing. I would always feel so bad because, like, there'd be one kid, like, like a young kid, you know, in the corner of the library, just like, like, what's going on? And they're like, I don't know how to fold this. I can't fold this. So I have to be like, all right, I promise it's possible. <laughs> there is a way. It's like folding a map, you know? Right. I was never great at origami, but I figured out um, many things. I always admired kids that can make, like, those pretty capture things or fortune tellers. I think they had different names. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. I'm trying to think if I can just fold one right now, right off the top. Maybe. I would be impressed. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, I'd have to maybe just try it here in a second. But... And I guess I'll show the back page. I don't even know what's on it. It's, it's probably not going to beat that spread you just saw. But <laughs> I like the word balloon, though. I'm a big fan of anything with word balloons. Oh, actually, this is kind of cool. So this one like almost folded out in a different kind of way to become like a Batman kind of spread. That's awesome. Digital justice, not just any kind of justice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Digital justice. Right. <laughs> Call it cybersecurity. Right, exactly. There it is. <laughs> Love it. But yeah, there you go. There you Did go. Did you have a name for it at all? Did you ever come up with a title? 
how do you even title this thing? I don't think I did. Right. <laughs> I don't have a title. I'm just like, here it is. Yep. I'm like, you know what? I'm holding a bunch of stuff, and that's right. just going to happen. Right. Yep. How's everybody doing? Good. I've been also working on, I'm like going to put a comic or something. I'll just draw something in here. I just, uh, I wanted to, and I have some stickers and like, washi tape and stuff to play with. I, I love washi tape. Oh man, that's awesome. Um, Lee, you did the mini comics of uh, Lupina, right? Yeah, so uh, that one I think I do, I think I did it as like a stapled mini zine. Okay. Um, I actually still have a copy. I need to, I need to actually mail it to someone. Nice. But, uh, I remember it being very tiny and cute. Yeah, um, I think it was, thank you, there was a couple, the last time I like printed a bunch of them, um, and then I I went to go bind them, I later on was flipping through them and realized like, oh no, I, I did this and I guess when I bound them, I put them in the wrong order, but. Oh my god, uh, it's a hazard, so I had a whole right? bunch of, yeah, but um. That's why it's probably better for me to do like small amounts, <laughs> like do them a couple at a time just to make sure. And it right. was a, it was a definitely a process that I was trying to figure out. Like for this, yeah. So I have this one here. Um, let's see. For these, I yeah, that's sorry, so my cute. screen is mirrored, so I don't know if it's mirroring no, I, for everyone. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, then, nice. Um, yeah. So he is super talented. Thank you. So on the inside of these, this uh, my these are just like the thumbnails for the comic Lupina that I've been working on. Um, these are from like the first issue, and um, I thought it would be fun to just like put them into a little mini mini book. And and uh, my friend James was the one who was calling it Chibina because in the thumbnails I tend to draw the characters like. Like TV big style, bean, big bean heads, and it's all <laughs> a mess. Um, there's this book uh, I bought at like a convention in 2017 called like it's just called Shitty Washington. <laughs> 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 I'll go grab it real quick. Um, That's awesome. But it's like it's kind of like that. Um, Maria, do you have a uh, fruits that look like butts anywhere nearby? I think I have a copy of that one somewhere. Yeah, but I was waiting. Like, I, I was like, please bring fruits that look like butts. Yes, I do, I do. Um, After Lee my, shares uh, this one, please share fruits that look like butts. My, um, so I can't find the shitty Watchmen book, but it was like basically a bunch of artists just like did, um, it, it's basically the, the comic Watchmen, but in like, in pages that look like these uh -huh. and some of, some of them don't even have dialogue and some of them the dialogue is just like condensed into one word and it's really funny i think it's actually more entertaining than like reading the original comic right um, that's personally great. that's yeah, because like been super serious yeah because i don't know there's just something i i love about like reading something in this form right and it's and drawing it this way is like more, uh, I don't know, sometimes when something gets super polished, it's like... It just like loses oh, a little bit of heart, right? Yeah, exactly. There's some like, so cute. some of that yeah. light that's in the initial... I'll be right back. My cat's eating a plastic bag. I need to get it away from Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do that. <laughs> no. And yeah, my cat likes to lay on paper bags and plastic bags. Silly. Does not discriminate against bags. Oh, yeah, yesterday during the throwdown, my cats wanted to very much be a part of everything. Um, <laughs> nice. It was cute. Um, I saw in the chat a minute ago there was talk of screenshotting the zine that you're working on and sending it at the end, I think. Um, that would be awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah how, how do you want us to submit these? Because, you know, I'll have to leave here in about couple minutes here okay um that's a good question so that would be 
Poppy or Danny may know. Uh, we were doing like a form thing for the throwdown, so I'm not sure how we want to select these. Um, keep an eye on the chat and that sort of thing. Hello. Hello. Hello, friends. I Hello. Oh, we can do something. Uh, if we want to bring uh, everybody's things into the mirror board, if you just want to take like a photo of what you've been working on, and then we can upload to them to the mirror, so we can have this as kind of like an archival piece. That would be cool. Put yeah. your name. Uh, if you want to put like your Instagram, uh, anything that you want to put next to it, you're more than welcome to share. Maybe not like like super personal details, like no social security numbers, but like. Whatever you like to share, uh, name and Insta handle. How, uh, yeah, we can do something like that. It's super easy. You can just like drag and drop things. I think you can right click and upload a file. So there's a couple different ways that we can add to the Miro. Um, so at the end, we'll we'll share the Miro screen, and you can just drag it into this app. It's essentially like working uh, from the app, but with it's like Inception. Uh, so like the the Miro will be inside the butter. Which is weird, but that's how it's gonna work. <laughs> awesome. Um, and if you if you have guys have to go early at some point, that's cool. I think we only have about like fifteen ish minutes, twenty minutes left. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted Maria. So Maria is the creative director of Blue Stick, and when Blue Stick started to get a little bit of press, um, we got asked to be on Indie Style, which is like awesome. fine, but like you know, not really where we had been before. And so um, a girl that used to help with Blue Stick named Kelsey went on there with me and we talked about Maria's zine, fruits that look like butts, because it's just a perfect example of a zine um, and it's in a movie format. So I'm gonna let Maria show it off because it's super funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang. Um, yeah, so this is fruits that look like butts. <laughs> Uh, I made this one. I was looking at one of my aunt's tomatoes that indeed looked like a butt to me. Um, and so each page is just kind of like illustration of a fruit and then little kind of quirky comment on the fruit. Um, I won't read them all because it's just very ridiculous. It's, it's weird being older now, like just by a few years and uh, realizing like, yeah, I was I thought I was very funny. <laughs> I you still were think very they're pretty funny. <laughs> funny. Yeah. I still think they're pretty funny. I think my favorite is the actually the tomato page. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it says if grown organically, tomatoes have the potential to represent a great booty. Um, so that's my humor. <laughs> yeah, so that's my humor. Uh, I think that's what I love about zines is like they don't have to be that deep all the time because um, I do make deep zines. I make zines that are kind of sad too, more for myself than for anyone else, but I just made a new one uh, this week called Growing Pains, and it's just the pains of growing up. It's a poem though, and I haven't ever done a poem zine, and it's very different. It's very funny how this is so different from this. Right, uh, but so it's like a can... timeline of you, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. So... Yeah, that's what I love about zines. There's just so much you can do with them, and you can make them really important and meaningful, or you can just do one for, like, tits and giggles. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to pop to the side real quick. Um, my computer looks like it wants to die. Um, is, it, <laughs> is it okay if I, I have a – I found one that um, a friend of mine made uh, that's pretty cute about her cat. It's is that okay if I, I share it while Kelsey? Yeah, definitely. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So this is my friend Jackie. She it's called it's titled uh, Tales of Sweet Baby Moo. Her is it a uh, Jackie Moo. Cross? Yes, yes. Awesome. I love that. Yes. And, oh, uh, I love that. I think she printed it like it's either uh, it's supposed to look like a risograph or it was a risograph print. Um, is it risograph or risograph? Tell me the truth, because I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> risograph, rizzo bread. Rizzo, like the rat. I've, yeah, yeah, I've always heard rizzo. Like Lizzo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like that uh, girl in Greece. And this, this one is actually done, and it looks like it was made in the style that you demoed for us, Kelsey, the, with the SpongeBob pants, because the yeah. way it's folded oh, yeah. is like, it actually... 
I could probably unfold this. I don't want to just because, not yet, but. Uh, so here's the first couple pages. He's like, Momo oh. is my like sweet, chalky, mean boy. <laughs> He's a little terror. I love him. I hope you enjoy these small shorts about this, this big, fussy peach. I love that. <laughs> and then she's got him like, She's got a few stories of him, like, uh, at night. So it says, Momo fusses at night. He can't stay asleep, so he's lots of... I'll show it in a second. I'm just trying to read it on my... Like, read it... Use my brain to, like, read it backwards. So, right. Momo fusses at night. He can't stay asleep, so he... That's why I'm reading it so He has so lots cute. of methods to try to make me wake up or wake me up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is just one, the scooting object on the nightstand, so it makes an awful noise method. And so he's just like scrape, scraping objects around. I then, love that. That's what cats do. They just, they're awake at night. <sighs> yes, then, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> and then this My one is just not. like, <laughs> Momo dreams of treats. And then Aww. this next one is just an image of like, she's in the shower, he peeks in, and then he's just sitting behind the shower curtain, just, just, and you can see her. And <laughs> That's so cute. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> that was literally my cat this morning as I was brushing my teeth. I was like, what? <laughs> That's so cute. And then oh, him in his little strawberry, strawberry house. Oh, man. Oh, my God, I want one of those. I do, too. <laughs> Sometimes I can't find Momo, so I'll check the bed and find a wiggly lump. That's so cute. Majestic beauty uncovered. <laughs> One of my friends also has a, a cat that likes to just burrow under the covers, and she just stays there. <laughs> That's great. So, yeah, that was... Thank you for sharing that. That is so cute. Yeah. I love Jackie. We were going to have Jackie at uh, Comic Carnival directly before the pandemic, and it was like, okay, uh, it'll be next year, so I need to reach yeah. out to her, and that would be cool. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. Um, she's actually how I met James, too. So they did the comic, um, I think it was... Was it Nutmeg? Nut, yes, Nutmeg. Yeah, Nutmeg is um, cute, yeah. Uh, and James is the one who wrote, uh, he's the writer for Lucina, so that was how, that's how that happened. Was that's awesome. Right. Yeah. And I think um, he also... I can... Go ahead. Sorry. No, you go ahead. I was just going to show how, like, you can do the same thing of folding down paper with a big piece of paper. Yeah. Because uh, that's how I did the growing pain scene. Nice. It's just one big 11 by 17 cut down the same way. I love 11 by 17 paper. Can I just say, like, that is such a fun size to work with. <laughs> it's cool. cool. All right. Well, i got to get going, so I'd love to... Thank you so much for participating. It was good to see you. For sure, yeah. Do you guys yeah. want to do the zine hold-up thing real quick? Yeah, I was going to say, if anybody feels like they want to share their zine in, like, the last 10, 15 minutes, um, that's cool. And if you want to work on it a little bit more before you send a screenshot, I'm sure that's fine. Don't feel too pressured. I didn't get a zine in there. So, um, <laughs> Stephen, how far can you get on yours? Uh, I put some stickers on it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't gotten to write any content yet. Oh, well. Cool. We'll do it and then upload it and we'll share it. I'll share stuff from Blue Stick. That'd be great. Okay. Does anybody else have, like, a page or two they want to share? And if not, yeah. I actually, I just have, like, my front and my first page. I'm really just drawing pages into it as it's folded. But um, I decided to do, like, the SpongeBob pants, but it's, like, the SpongeBob <laughs> pants. SpongeBob then the first page is just like a sponge washing dishes you're a hard working sponge and like I was trying to I was trying to think like just showing all the 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 life of a, of a regular sponge and then it when the like you're a hard working sponge this is gonna turn into like this is gonna turn into like an advertisement for Spongebob listen like, Leon your job is to finish that please okay okay <laughs> because I will I want to see it oh man I'll finish it during the I'll probably finish it during the comic workshop and then I'll make the rest of it like a little comic or do it that would this be so could great be, this could I was actually thinking so 
the comic workshop is it it it's a little after one thirty. I don't know. In case you are if you have other thing other plans or other workshops you want to attend, go for it. I'm all I'm all about you have the power to choose your life. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just saying if you have the if you don't have other plans and you would like to if you're if you're curious about making some comics. Uh, Lisa professional. Maybe to fill in your zine. I'm a, I'm a professional. You're a professional. It's just like, <laughs> making a, a thing. I'm like, uh, I'm, this is all going to be really casual, but just like, uh, you can, if you have a, now that you have this um, mini zine making method, you could make another one of these, or if you want to, Put a little, draw a little comic to, to add to your existing, like, zine in progress. Um, when I saw that you were doing that workshop, I was like, we're doing the same workshop, but, like, different things. So I was super yeah. excited. I was like, you can get both sides of the coin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like great. the crafting, like, the crafting process and then a, like, a form of content that can go in there. I'm not really so much a writer. Uh, I just draw stuff. Listen, I you like draw, draw real good. Stuff. Thank you. <laughs> I... If it were just me, I would be like making stuff like yeah, SpongeBob. Pants. Sponge Robert. <laughs> Sponge Robert. Does anybody else want to share what they've been working on? Uh, I can share. I'm not done with mine, but I yeah, can share. Yeah, I don't think any of us are. <laughs> so, a little quick thing. I just moved into this apartment like two months, two a month and a half ago. So okay. all of my art supplies are in a box next to me. <laughs> so. Yeah. I had to dig into the box to find an old sketchbook to find a piece of paper and then my pins I have some like colorful like ink joy pins awesome um and so this like little technique I do is called like thoughtless or mindless drawing where you're just kind of drawing stuff yeah that's so perfect for zines. I labeled it what you're thinking about mm -hmm. and so all it is is just oh, me I playing with all the different colors that I have and yeah. drawing whatever shape comes out that I'm still, great. like I said, I'm still working on it. Yeah. But I, I started it like as a whole piece of paper, so that way when you fold it, you know, you're still seeing little sections of it. That's so awesome. I love that. Super cute. Very cool. Yeah. That's great. You should finish that too. I would. My goal for everybody is try to finish it, and if you want to take it to a copy machine, do it and tag us, and we'll share it. And if you don't, just we'll still share it anyway. I'll um, I'll try to take a full size picture. I don't have a printer yet either. Cool. So. Yeah, yeah. I kind of worried about that. I was like, well, I could bring out the copy machine, but maybe you know, I don't know where people are set up uh, for streaming. So, but that's awesome. Bailey, did you do anything with yours? Yeah, I don't know how well my um, camera is going to work for this, but it's kind of pop party. Um, so I did this spread that says it put a ring on. <laughs> nice. I love that. I love cutting out words out of magazines and just doing yeah. a collage. That's super fun. I like keeping it to the point where you can kind of tell what the headline was, but you're what? like, oh, it's a play on words. So originally the article was called, like, put a ring on it. Um, and then as kind of a continuation of that, I found a little gnome and <laughs> drew a telephone. And it says, one eight hundred. Uh, call me 1-800-YOUR-NAME. Because I've been listening to that Lil Nas X song a lot. Yeah, that's And then awesome. this is a incomplete one. It's I all I have is the word thinking, but it's broken up into Finn and King, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Yet. That's really cool though. That's like that you could leave that as art, really. <laughs> yeah, because it's I like I like dual meanings and wordplay. Um, right. So yeah. I love that. That's awesome. Um. So, Maria, you did a zine this week. When is that going to be available? Uh, it is available, actually. Okay. Yeah, hot, right hot off, off the presses. Hot <laughs> off the presses. So, uh, <laughs> if you guys don't know, we have, like, a kind of mini virtual zine fest going on on Indie Design's website. If you go on there, Maria has a table. I have a table. Um, go to Maria's table and pick up the zine. Because she did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> um, you can also get fruit stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yeah. Please get fruits that look like butts. Yeah. It needs to be in your library. Um, yeah. I really didn't, let's see, I didn't get anywhere. 
Of course, the cover. I put uh, Captain Phasma on the back because she was a really underrated character. I should have put my Star Wars collection behind me during this so you could see how much of a dork I really am. Um, <laughs> but I did that cover. And then I have this weird, like, um, Mad Magazine money that came from a Mad Magazine board game. And so I just, like, taped the yeah. money. <laughs> I was going to do something, but I didn't get anywhere. Um, so that's okay. All good. Um, this is super fun. Gustic is doing a lot of things while at the same time still figuring out what Gustic is doing. Um, but we're very friendly, so <laughs> reach out to us. Um, we love to collaborate. Pretty much any collaboration we've gotten asked to do, I've done it. Um, so it's, why not, you know? Um, if you ever have any questions, email, DM, spit up, Maria. Um, we also, our art director, Lori Lumont, is super awesome. I don't know if you guys know Lori. Um, really awesome artists in the community and that's pretty much it uh, and unless you have any questions for me um, I really appreciate you coming by today yeah, yeah. thank you yeah. thank you guys. Awesome. yeah you're welcome awesome. thanks for having me this is yeah this is great and thank uh, you. and just because oh no I just got pen on my pants uh, sorry I'm trying to find this it was a matter of time Miro so I can share it with everybody so you can upload your things when you're when you're ready. Miro is so interesting. Oh, like I was totally scared of that program, and now I'm super invested, and I think it's great. <laughs> a lot of fun. It's a great way to collaborate. Totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how to find the link to this because I'm well versed in this technology. <laughs> <laughs> I will find a link to it and just send it somehow. Actually, if you guys just want to like post a hmm, something or other, I'm not sure. <laughs> Can people email to you? Like, could they just do a direct email? Yeah, that could work. Okay. There should be a way. I'll find a way and then I'll send it to you, Kelsey. And then. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, if we do, if you do want to get access to this mural board, is it, and I'm going to figure out how to do this at some point, probably for the next workshop, um, I'll put my email into the chat and you can grab it there. It's dannykane00 at gmail.com. Oops, that says Colm. Just erase the L. <laughs> Colm. <laughs> Forget about that L. <laughs> Forget about that L. It's not there. Um, and then we can, I'll send out the link when I do find it. Cool. Yeah. There we go. Oh, Bailey found I it. I found it. Nice. It, okay. So if you just <laughs> click here, I, I, I'm on it right now. I'll just copy it into the chat so that you guys have it once this call ends. And there. Sweet. Let cool. me awesome. make sure that that works, but it should, it should be the right one. Basically, um, for your future reference, Danny, if you click on the Miro logo in the upper left, it set, when you hover, it says go to board. So that's Perfect. how you do it. Perfect. Yep. I was impatient with it. I kept trying to like right click and then I was shaking the mouse everywhere. No, I just got to be patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, Lee, I'm actually going to be your moderator for this afternoon. So I will see you then. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Um, grab some lunch or coffee and take deep breaths and have a mm. wonderful day. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Kelsey. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Bye.